of course, contributes to my paranoia. And right now, I feel I've been captured in this fiction that he's writing, and my lawsuit and the suit in, in the High Court in Denmark was very much about me trying to. Can I just stop you because? Yeah, sure. Whatever. Okay. Um, you you say that you're in love with him, and it's scary to you that he's obsessed with you writing your story and trying to make sure what you're going to do in the future. For most people who are in love with someone, that's actually a huge. That's great. That's usually something they want from the person they're in love with. That they. And I think it's kind of surprising that you're presenting it as something that you don't. Well, I'm not in love with him anymore. I was. I used to be, but I'm not anymore. That's your answer. <laughs> you're not in love with him anymore. So that's why you don't want him to write books about you or think about your future moves. Well. The issue is that he's pushed me into his work, and I, I'm desperately trying to get out of it. Um, and this is what this lawsuit was about. Yeah. Um, and we've been through two very surreal days uh, of legal hearings. Yesterday, um, I was cross-examined by my own lawyer and my opponent's lawyer, and. Um, my enemy author was also cross-examined, as well as the head of the publishing house, Johannes Ries. Today was the, court procedure, the, the legal procedure where the lawyers were making their argument, and it was the most insanely boring thing I've ever listened to in my life. <laughs> Why? Well, my opponent's lawyer, he took two hours just going on and on and on about citing uh, legal statutes, and I don't think I've ever seen, I've ever sat through anything like that. But yesterday, yesterday was definitely the day of the most active. Would you agree? Yeah, it was, because you spoke uh, for a while, for an hour, and so did your opponent. Um, but why were you compelled to speak to him today at the end of it all? At the end of the case, after some time went by, uh, Thomas came up to this, his opponent and shook his hand, and they had an exchange for about five minutes. Um, did that was that impulsive or was that planned? I was I was behind my I was with my lawyer and I looked over towards him and I saw him standing there with his big wet eyes looking towards me as he always does with this you know he always he always plays the role of the victim and the the, the suffering artist the artist with the big soul and I couldn't help I had to say something because I feel this is this is just this is what he does you know, he always looks like a suffering artist suffering artists, and to some extent I hate him for that. Um, and he plays that role so well, so I had to go and say hi, and say thanks. Well, actually I told him, I congratulated him, him with winning the contest of having the most boring lawyer. <laughs> my, my lawyer was insanely entertaining compared to his lawyer. <laughs> um, anyway. Can I ask another audience question? Sure. Um, if you, whoever here is keeping up with this case, who is voting for Thomas in this room? Raise your hand, please. <laughs> <laughs> fiction and what's reality. No, what, what's the reason why? What's the reason why there's no uh, vote? Yeah, why is there, one direction is there any the support for me? <laughs> why? Someone took my picture, put it on the cover of the book, and they used it on posters to market it around Copenhagen and Denmark. And they put my whole life in the book as well, and then they call it a novel. And they also claim that I'm fictional. Actually, also, Nelson claims, my enemy author claims.
thinks that I'm actually just a poor copy of his literary character. <laughs> <laughs> and that he was the one who was supposed to be suing me to, and not the other way around. <laughs> and that is, of course, highly insulting for any, would be highly insulting for any living human being to see his life being taken over that way and then off even adding to that to have the author claiming that he invented me. <laughs> and a question? Yes. Uh, what does he write in the book? I mean, how, how is you uh, portrayed in this book? Uh, have you read it? Or? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 the question of the evening. I had to, I had to, I was forced. He wrote, he wrote a previous book where I'm a character as well, and I only got halfway through it, but this book I read to the very end, because... Uh, yeah, why did I read it? <laughs> I don't know, you feel kind of compelled when there's, you know, your own picture is on the cover of the book. You feel compelled to read it. And it's also about you, apparently. Yeah, and I like to read about myself, I guess. <laughs> and and how, how is your portrait, do you think? Is it uh, something of you, or is it... Um, what could you say about how, you, how you're portrayed? Um... The portrayal of me is um, highly exaggerated, exaggerated uh, but it's also, he attributes a lot of thoughts, like uh, in, in that um, he is basically putting his own voice in my mind, and I feel that very uh, intrusive, the way that he attributes thoughts and opinions um, to this character that he identifies as me. And the other thing is that we had an agreement from the very beginning that we wouldn't send our private lives in any, in any uh, art form or any context of art, but always keep our, you know, keep our private lives outside of the art. But of course, he started experimenting with his own private life and tried to make his private life into an art piece. And then he tries to pull me into that as well, where I try to stand outside art somehow, maybe. Does anyone here want to maybe give a quick summary as to what they really think is going on? Any brave people in the audience? I know you all have opinions <coughs> regarding the situation, clearly on the fact that no one has a vote. Um, is anyone willing to get involved in this performance we're doing and talk about what you think is happening or why we don't have a vote? I really find it interesting how you market each other's work in a way because I'm really interested in reading this book now. Um, after you talk about it, <laughs> and your talk about it wouldn't have existed without the book, you know? That's true. So yeah. it kind of is like his artwork merges together with your artwork, if you can call this an artwork. So if I win the case, the book will be <coughs> evacuated, and uh, then I, it's, uh, the question is whether we could return to the state before the book was written. Uh, <laughs> you think that's possible? <laughs> well, my lawyer thinks it's possible. At least that was the document in the today. Well, it's out there. It's already happened. Sorry? What does that mean, the state? That's how they, they, they refer to it, that uh, they call it in Danish at Ratsdelstand for Førbogen Udgivet to be opretholdt. Which means that... Doesn't yeah. include couple therapy. Couple therapy? <laughs> Doesn't include couple therapy. Uh, well, couple therapy is only a thing you engage in once the couple, the, the relationship is over. Um, no, 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 the opposite. <laughs> hey. But it will be over once you start therapy. <laughs> Have you ever heard of any successful uh, couple therapy sessions where a couple uh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. 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 Raise your hands. How many? Well, that doesn't got my ex wife out there. <laughs>
Just pulling, just pulling him inside the courtroom, and his, in regard to his own project, which is to declare that he's dead and he's not a living person, just to get him in the courtroom makes him forces him to, to acknowledge reality. <laughs> and there are forces that can pull him inside the courtroom and make him state his name and uh, and refer to his body with a name. And for me, that helps. That creates some distinction between life and fiction in some regards. So the, not only the court decision, but the whole theater of the court 
<laughs> makes us all alive somehow. Who agrees with this? You just said theater of the court. Yeah, yeah that does. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, yeah. it's already a, the court is a stage. Yeah, but we all know that that court is a theater. My my lawyer was wearing okay. this ridiculous. So blue, how is that? I don't agree on that part. I don't what? agree. It's not a theater for me. Well, as a performance, it is. No. Are they wearing robes? I don't care. We all stand up when the, the judges come in. It, it's not. It's not a theater for me. Meaning what? what? Meaning that I'm here with my blood and flesh, and if I would go to court, it would mean something to me that would be very um, that I could feel in my body, and I would trust that feeling. It's, so it's not a theater. Theater, I can make a, a distance, or I can judge whether it's uh, something's going on. Yeah. So I take it very serious. Well, I, I, I'd take it deadly point. serious yeah. if I would go there. I would know that I wouldn't necessarily agree with the system or yeah. whatever, but I'd take it very serious. I do too. I, I, I spend 150,000 days growing around it, so that's pretty serious. Yes. Regarding, you know, considering that I'm a student. Anyhow, uh, my, question, <laughs> my question would be, what, what's so interesting about paranoia? Because you keep, that's what I hear. If I would find some kind of red thread, there's this mentioning about paranoia. So for you, what is what is the thing about paranoia? Well, I don't know. That's a boring story about me as a living person, I guess. Um, I just always feel that there's <laughs> there's a truth outside me that I'm desperately trying to catch up with, and I felt that from very early on. And it makes it even worse if I imagine someone writing books about me, so he has the real truth about me, and I I, I definitely have. Uh, constantly has to play this catch up game where I try to catch up with my own truth and uh, is this, this is why I'm hoping that the court case would be the very end of that. But so it, this, the, the paranoia is extremely subjective just as the, the work of art or the writing is a, a totally subjective thing. Yes. You are two subjectives fighting about the truth. Who would I be able to decide? Why is, it, why is it that you give him, your opponent, and the court the power to decide who you are? Why do you, why do you choose to do that? Oh, uh, my therapist tells me to do that. That's too easy. That's too easy. Come again. Come again. Yeah. Oh, uh, sorry, I'm still thinking about it, but my therapist is saying that. But, but. <laughs> Well, I mean, can I just say something that um, the most common form of court action is usually divorce court, people getting divorces, which is also a matter of identity, who's wrong, who is right, based on what, like who has the proof that one person didn't love the other person that much. And, and that is the most common court experience, and it's a very serious one because children are involved, homes are involved, et cetera, et cetera. And um, Thomas and Nilsson, it's almost like they're having a divorce. Mm -hmm. But it's a and that's how I look at it. So you're saying it's like you know, the court cream. is not always fair. It's, 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 it's to the law. It's, it's not necessarily that the court can tell you what's fair. Never. In any country. You, you have to but that's, that's why the court gets involved. That's why you pay for lawyers, because someone's going to be able to convince the world what is fair. But the court is no, no, but it's not necessarily what the court considers is not necessarily fair. Mm -hmm. It's just the law procedure. Yeah, but the so thing is, it's saying who, 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 who am I, it's saying who am I, and it's saying who is Nelson. That's what it's saying. So that's but the process to get the truth in this it's case. It's not, you don't, you, I mean, it's the, it, it's, it's not the fairness of it. It's, you're not going to find it in the law case. It seems more like a psychological process, a legal yes, process. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's about the 150,000 kron that you use in a legal case might also be so spent, spent uh, on a therapist. On the yeah. bench. Yeah. Uh, so you're actually uh, you're, uh, attacking me for uh, taking my psychological issues to court. No. No, or not at all. saying that I'm just it might be a better it. place for it's just, it's, 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 you, you know, it's the same case through literature from hundreds of years ago that somebody writes about somebody else it's you know it's it's a, it's a classical case that you know somebody writes about her brother or her ex yeah that's husband. my opponent's line of argument mm -hmm. um, and now you're getting a little bit of the philosophy from me because i've heard that throughout the past few days okay. and it's 
thing is that before all of I'll get to you just in a second. Uh, the thing is that it, that might be very well and true uh, that literary history has been full of these cases and incidents, and that is literature of people writing about their life and who surrounds them. But here you have a very in, on, on multiple levels, you have on, on, on one level, you have a personal provocation of me by Nelson to breach our contact, our contract. We've always been this uh, thing in Spanish that you said, I think. Who said, yeah. Who said. Uh, and we've always been very formal and dressing each other as Nelson and Russell. And um, it was also our understanding that I would never describe him as a living person or his life or his daughter, Emma, who's been playing with my daughter a lot. Um, but suddenly, he changed the rules. And because he's aligned with the, the biggest publishing house in Denmark, uh, he gets away with publishing the story as a book. And I don't have really any say in that. And the second thing is that the book as a genre is a new, it's not like Don Quixote or a, a book, uh, a Neue Romain, uh, a, a, a book about, yeah, do you call it a key novel? Nah. Yeah, it's like, see, it's pretty lovely, but I don't think you call it a key novel. Uh, is, first of all, they all refer to Tommy, yeah, I didn't have gas, but they had like 80 characters. This book is built on one character, and it's my life, and I, it's got my picture on the cover. And also, as he's saying, keeps saying, my opponent is that he's he chose me, and it had to be me because he needed reality to go into fiction. So it's part of the effect that is sought sought by this new genre of books that he challenges. It's funny because you had you had your own kind of performance going between each other. You never you talk to each other in Mister. Yeah, that was art, like a performance yeah, like yeah. you've been seeing here tonight. So he has the need for reality to write this book. Kind of yeah, well, yeah, that's true, and that's also that's why I was so disappointed with him in this book. <laughs> anyway, all of the group in the uh, uh, yes, uh, 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 I wonder if we could leave the philosophy for a while. Um, I have some concrete questions. Um, how big is the print run of this book? This is what, again also my opponent keeping saying, oh, it's only 1,500 copies, so okay. it's not that bad. So it's 1,500 copies. But, but they hope uh, that it will go mainstream. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Still, okay. Have you any idea of how many they've sold? Well, well now I think it's, it's probably reaching the bestseller list now because everyone is getting copies because I think I'm going to win and then it's going to be inoculated, so you better get a collector's copy now. Now, uh, uh, now let's think about the way you feel, like the way you feel bad. Do you feel more bad if you know that more people are out there reading them? Or is it the book itself that makes you upset? Or is it something in between? No, it's the whole thing. It's the whole thing. Yeah. It, 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 it's, it's like, uh, because these people, the readership of the book, they are reading a story written by Nelson about me, yeah. my real name, and I'm not really sure that I want to have my real name used in that way. And yeah. all Nelson's impressions of me um, as the only document, if I, I, you know, I constantly think I'm gonna die tomorrow. And if I die tomorrow, my children will end up, the only document they will have of me in Denmark is that fucking book. And that's gonna be Nelson's version. Of <laughs> so, so it's mostly the principle of it. Is that the only thing? Well, not, not only no, but no, let's imagine that Dance Claire Alfred makes a deal with Gyllendale and, and orders wow. 50,000 copies. Wow. You know, at a special yeah. rate. So would, you know, would, that, would that make you feel even worse? Or and better. <laughs> well, <laughs> what would make it even worse is that he sold the book to Hollywood and made a film of it without me having you know, <laughs> just making stupid silly documentaries with my little camera. Okay, uh, I'll move on. Um, if you, okay, we have the court case, you're sort of caught up in the court case and the logic of the court case and 
the theater of the court, um, or the logic of the court case, and of course you hope to win. But if you look at it at a wider perspective, uh, and imagine, like, would there be any other way for you uh, winning, winning the court case or not winning the court case, uh, but other something else yeah. That, oh, yeah, I see your point. that would give you, you know, satisfaction. Yeah, well, how about maybe, beating maybe, the man maybe, up? Maybe, you know, would that make you feel good? Maybe you know, if, uh, good you know, question. Uh, maybe. Have you considered beating him up? You know, well, like, we, you know, you know, spotting him at the bar, you know, around two o'clock when he's, you know, had three elephant all beers. Of, all of, obviously, I'm a 19th century man. Yeah. And we Just beat him up. What? <laughs> what? Just beat him up? The revolution guy said it. <laughs> <laughs> we should have had a duplicate. <laughs> that, 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 that was how you settled things in the old days, but yeah. now we only have the legal system. Of course, if Grunen came to me and said, okay, you, you write your version of the story, I don't know, maybe that that will change things. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure about it yet. Uh, the Bandidos and Hells Angels, they don't go to court, you know, I mean, they solve it in so the street or group. in the bar. <laughs> you know, Hells Angels, that's a good one. Uh, can I say something? Um, Another way, you, way, you know, we would just go to a <laughs> modest I don't even know and advice. take it easy. You're like,
what he really um, was trying to evoke or <coughs> formulate in his well, as, you, as you're talking, I just realized how pathetic <laughs> it is actually that he just doesn't kill himself, you know, that, that plenty of people have successfully just killed himself. Uh, it's just like this middle class boy from Dublin who doesn't have the, the strength to kill himself and then he has to make a scene of it and just claim that he killed himself. Uh, and that's actually profoundly pathetic. Um, when you say his project, I'm not sure he has a project like that. Uh, he's just, he's a little bit hysteric like me and refusing to be pecked as such and such and then he wants to change his name or identity to change perceptions of me. Um, and even worse with, with him killing himself, um, he kills me off in the book. So you can see that that now he's 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 run out of, of steam and energy in his own work because he hasn't done nothing more to kill in his life. So now he's killing other people. He's killing his loved one. Dear love, <coughs> what better status, that scares me, and what better I, status I'm sorry, that was, I didn't completely address your point, but I see your point. Uh, I hope that the audience will understand. Could I ask about the yeah. love, uh, love thing? Because uh, I got this book from my mother. Oh, that's a lie. Last time we were here, we had that other guy here uh, talking about his... Another own, day or just today? The, the same event. Uh, oh! My enemy was here yeah. at the same... Now you are here and it's, there's a kind of, uh, kind of sad melancholic mirror and one guy is desperately trying to get rid of his identity and the other one is now in the trying to get his identity away. Right? So it's like a mirror, it's a mirror. So you're saying it's quite uh, pathetic. And then I thought about this. Did, did you consider this that you're actually, by doing this whole theater of thought, you're actually confirming his position now in a psychological way, kind of, it's called it, reaffirming him as a, yeah. reaffirming his project. Of course, of also in a business way, of course, this, this is a book that was written and now it's, it's time again. You know, that's true. Also, That's true. in the kind of uh, advertising style, he's kind of mm. confirming his position here. Uh, simply, how, how do you see this? Uh, uh, several things. Uh, he's 10 years older than me, and when I met him, he was uh, quite an established artist, and I was nobody. And I kind of worked my way up. And um, as long as I was nobody, it was easy for him just to put me into his work and create the context and the frame for me. Uh, now I'm doing this film here, um, and I hope to create an even bigger frame to put to, 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 to impose superimpose on his frame. So I will gain, you know, uh, the author, yeah, the authorship to the whole story. So you're uh, you're doing a film about this. So you're going to do the same to him. Here, because I'm, I think I'm gonna lose in court anyhow. Anyhow, let's see what happens. If I lose, I'm gonna, definitely I'm gonna go all out, you know. Then there, you, you then I, there's no limits to what I can do. Yeah, you yeah. Know? If you lose in court and you, you, as you say, you've advertised this book now that I've never heard of and I won't go and buy, um, um, and then you will continue to do the same thing to him. So then it's just been a waste of uh, revenge, and he will do the same. Waste of revenge. <laughs> I would say revenge is always good. Also, uh, well, uncalled for revenge. Yeah, it's about how you devote your life to this, and then it sounds like you might do the same to you, and then yeah. it's just the cycle that's true. But I can even like energy. Yeah. Um. Yes. But you said you had a child. What does that mean? I'm just being realistic. You said that black energy is not really a good thing to do. When you have children. So parents are not allowed to feel resentment and rage and revenge. Sure. That's and not revenge. the same as black. It's also not the court's job. No. It's a big difference. You can keep it. I don't know what go. difference children makes. But how does your revenge make it, uh, an, art, an artwork for you? An what? An artwork for you. Yeah. Are you doing an artwork? Yeah. yeah. And the, the, the only real purpose for that artwork is your personal revenge. I'm, I'm 
I'm not doing art. Why are you? Why are you here? Uh, in this that's house. That's a good question. Yes. Can, I, can I be like me? I don't know. On this stage. This is like a revolutionary photography project. Uh, performance or is it a campaign? I don't know. I'm not his curator, and also this is not a performance. This is a. This is two very tired people after. Uh, no, he said that we were going to come and just like we didn't plan anything. And he said we're just going to go sit in front of some people and chat. And so here we are. And, and so it's um, you, you took off the mobile phone cameras. Yes. We're always in this mode. And there's nothing wrong with that. Um, no, it's not about wrong or right. Yes. It's about that These are not phones, by the way. I can't call anyone on this. But, but what were you saying? No, I, it's, it's not about that it's right or wrong, and you can film if that's what you feel like doing. Yeah, I love I, I'm just, I'm just keep constantly thinking about, if you say you are bored with something, I totally feel bored too. Honestly, mm -hmm. really bored. So I'm thinking, what the fuck? So what are you exactly bored with? I'm bored with this stuff that's going on here. <coughs> right now in this yes, very room? Yes, right now. But you feel, uh, I take it a question that doesn't seem like boredom. Oh, it can be boredom. Like because, boredom. because <laughs> no, it's like uh, if you feel that you're being bored <laughs> in a specific way, at some point you s you feel about okay, let's just leave the room. That that's why don't you? <laughs> why don't you? No, uh, be because because it's something that um, uh, well, yes, I can leave, but uh, why should I? Actually, you're the person talking in this room right now. Yes, so I know. So, if you left the room, you'd be leaving on yourself. Who are you? No, I mean, uh, you can have a stage here, you can have a stage here. I think, I think it's, uh, it's quite uh, honest of me to say what I feel in here. I do agree with um, and I think that it's, any it's sign of excited aggression within boredom is not boredom. Sorry, I didn't get that part. I totally agree with Thomas that any sign of excited aggression yeah. within boredom is not boredom, but you're actually offended by something. You're yes, I'm. Uh, so you're energized, not bored. But uh, uh, thanks for analyzing me. I appreciate very much that you're analyzing me. Because why not? We're all like sitting yeah, here. Yes, I, I'm saying. Talking. Yes, yes. But uh, I'm honest about this. Uh, the fact that that. Uh, that yes, there is an excitement or a, a, a feeling of anger, but it's actually uh, because I'm starting to, to think that this is really something where, where I want to leave. But of course, I pull the limit. Of course, I'm, I'm is expecting... Is that an etiquette? Or? No, the thing is, it's just very polite to stay oh, yeah. until the event is over. I don't, I, I don't agree that's Danish. <laughs> it's etiquette. I don't think it's Danish. I think it's human. I walk out of most art I watch. Okay, good night. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs>